So right now we've already learned about equivalent fractions. So now we're going to be looking at adding fractions using a model such as a fraction strip. So the first example we're going to be given, so adding fractions, the first example is 1 third plus 1 fourth. Now if we look at our actual fraction strips and we see here 1 third is this much. 1 fourth is this much. If we combine them to, uh, together, so if I were to just move this one over, oops. we can see that it's going to be approximately mm, maybe about four sevenths or about six tenths. We're not really sure, so we'll have to do some calculations and we'll use equivalent fractions to help us answer this question. So let's start with one third and see on the fraction line on our number strips what, it, what it's equal to. Well, one third is the same as if I draw my straight line down here, one third is the same as two sixths, it's also the same as three ninths, and it's also the same as four twelfths. One fourth, however, is equal to two eighths or three twelfths. <coughs> when we're adding fractions together, we want to use pieces that are the same size because they're easier to add together. So if we look, pieces of, of chocolate bar cut into six pieces and cut into eight pieces is not really easy to add together. Now as you as you can see from our fraction strips, we found that they're both equal to if I had pieces of uh, cut into 12 or a fraction, sorry, a chocolate bar cut into 12 pieces. So we know that one third is the same as four twelfths and one quarter is the same as three twelfths. So now if we add those two equivalent fractions together, 4 twelfths plus my 3 twelfths equal 7 twelfths. That's the first way that we can use a model. The second way is by using equivalent fractions without the fraction strips. So another easy example that we'll be using is 1 third plus 2 fifths. The way we solve this question is by number one, looking for a common denominator. Common denominator means that we are looking for a number that both the denominators will go evenly into. So the way we can do that is we look at multiples of both numbers. Multiples of three are three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four. The reason why I choose these numbers is because 3 can go into all of these. A chocolate bar cut into 3 will also mean that those pieces can also fit into 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. It can be divided evenly. Whereas multiples of 5 are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And we can stop there since we notice that 15 is a common multiple. So what we have to do is we change our fractions into equivalent fractions. One third is equal to how many pieces if I had if they were cut into 15. Well, I had to cut my pieces five times smaller, so that means I'll have five times more pieces. I had to multiply by five, so I multiply the numerator by five, and the equivalent is five over 15. For two over five, same thing. I have to multiply by three times to get three times the number of pieces to fit the same amount of chocolate. I need to do the same to the top, so two times three is six over fifteen. Now I have my equivalent fractions. Five over fifteen plus six over fifteen, I can now add these together and I make eleven over fifteen. Notice that the denominator stays the same because that tells me the size of the pieces where the numerator tells me how many pieces. So that's why I can add the numerators, but I don't change the size of those pieces. So my final answer for letter B is t 11 over 15, or 11 fifteenths.